Stay tuned for a special message at the end of this video. Hi, my name is Rebecca. Over the years, I've lived and worked as a spiritualist and ghost tour guide in some of the most haunted cities in the United States. Now, I invite you to come along with me as I set out to discover even more. Together, we will venture across the country in search of the most horrific haunts and spooky stories. I'm Rebecca, the Ghost Guide. Austin, Texas, known for its rich history, rustic natural beauty, music scene, and yes, its ghosts. Back in February, after traveling to Boston, London, and New York to film, I decided to chase some warmer weather farther south. Prior to this venture, I had never been to Austin or knew anyone from there. What better place to find adventure both alive and dead? So join along with me as we visit this archival footage of Rebecca, the Ghost Guide. Hi, my name is Rebecca. Over the years, I have lived and worked as a spiritualist and ghost tour guide in some of the most haunted cities in the United States. Now, I invite you to come along with me as I set out to discover even more. Together, we will venture across the country in search of the most horrific haunts and spooky stories. I'm Rebecca, the Ghost Guide. Having lived in both the United States Capitol and the capital of North Carolina, I can tell you from first-hand experience that something about the drama of politics invites spiritual activity. Austin, Texas is no exception. The first ghostly tale I was able to find started right here at the Texas State Capitol building. While the cornerstone of this grand building was laid in 1885, the massive building project would not be completed until 1888. However, the first chilling tale dates back to before this building was even built. History has a way of resurfacing, and that's just what happened. Texas State Preservation Board was contacted about a body having been buried, quote, near the river on the Capitol grounds, unquote. The body in question belonged to John Bellantine, who died in 1846. Is Ballantyne the reason behind the orbs, odd happenings, and spooky sounds found in and around the Capitol building? Likely, no. You see, the original Capitol building was not on this site, but rather a log cabin that was closer to the Colorado River. That said, while the Valentine's ghost is likely not to be found here, I would be surprised if his spirit roams where the log cabin used to be. If you're thinking that means the Capitol building is ghost-free, stay tuned, because I'm not done with this place just yet. But first, not even a block away from the Capitol building is the governor's mansion. As this mansion has served Texas governors and their families since 1856 and remains the fourth oldest continuously occupied governor's residence in the United States, you probably don't have to get too creative to imagine this place is haunted. One of the most notorious spirits here is Sam Houston. And yes, when I say Houston, I mean the guy they named the city of Houston after. Houston saw many sides of Texas. He was a leader of the Texas Revolution, was the first and third president of the country of Texas. Then, after the United States annexed the area, he served as the sixth governor of the state of Texas. While he was also instated as the seventh governor in 1859, he would later be forcibly discharged in 1861 for not wanting to secede from the United States in order to join the Confederacy. His death would come only two years later. A man who truly gave his life to Texas only to be driven from it all for a lost cause. For what he was robbed of in life, it would seem he's come back for in death. He has been seen walking around his old bedroom, where the four-poster bed can still be viewed. However, you'd be hard-pressed to ask him for his thoughts of what happened if you saw him. He's been known to vanish as soon as he's been seen. Back at the Capitol building, another politician is known to take his work into death with him. On June 30th, 1903, State Comptroller Robert M. Marshall 
had his life cut suddenly short. The story goes that one day, a former employee of Love, William Hill, met him in his office. It is unknown if any words were exchanged, but what is known is that Love was given a letter from Hill. Following this, Hill shot Love from across the desk. J.W. Stevens, who served Love as chief bookkeeper, chased down Hill. The two would struggle until another shot would suddenly end Hill's life. Love would state that he had no idea why Hill would want to murder him. However, we'll never be able to know Hill's side of the story either. Whatever the cause, and whatever the lost truth may be behind it, Love has stayed back to continue his work as a state representative. Both tourist and state trooper alike have claimed to see a man of Love's description wearing a top hat and period clothing, both in the first floor office, as well as the pomade. One does wonder if it's possible his death was so sudden, if he even knows that he's dead. Or maybe he stays behind to ensure that whatever happened to him would not befall anyone else. Whatever you may believe, be sure to leave a comment below if you, in fact, have seen him too. Less than a 15-minute walk towards the river, I found myself blown away by the amount of construction and industry everywhere I looked. I nearly missed what is considered one of Austin's modern architectural treasures, the present-day Omni Austin Hotel. I've seen a fair amount of places, but it's hard to properly describe how equally chic and intimidating this place is. And I get the feeling that I haven't been the only one to feel that kind of pressure here over the years. Enter Jack, or rather the story of Jack. Some will swear that he existed, others claim him to be an urban legend. So what's Jack's supposed story? Sadly, it's less of his life that is known and more of his death. Whether it was too many drinks or too many tears, it is understood that Jack breathed his last on the fall down from his room somewhere near a higher floor. His haunting is less visual and more emotional. It's said that in his old room, the maids wouldn't enter for months, saying that it was too sad of a place to be. Some guests have even requested to change rooms in an attempt to escape a feeling of dread so strong it keeps them up late at night, only to plague their dreams later. But is that really Jack up there? From the stories alone, I'm led to believe it's more akin to a thought form spirit. However, if you've ever had an experience to counter my understanding, please be sure to comment below. Otherwise, you're likely to not find me inside this hotel any longer than I need to be. The last story I have for you from the Capitol building is one similar to many stories I've heard and retold from many odd places over the years. They are stories of women, typically in white or black, who call to specific people, usually men or children, only to disappear before the onlooker gets too close. The story at the State House is that of a woman in red, who is often spotted by men before she vanishes through a wall. It's understood that behind this wall was a stairwell protected in secrecy, and that she would come to meet her lover who worked here. However, that's all that we seem to know about her. Her name has been lost, and even more upsetting is that we do not know why she haunts this place. Did she die here? Is her body hidden somewhere? Was she murdered? Too many questions to count and she never seems to stick around long enough to answer any of them. And finally, what is understood to be Austin's most haunted place, the Driscoll Hotel. A historic building now sandwiched and shadowed by Austin's up and ever evolving downtown urban scene, stands proudly as it continues to live up to its expectation of being one of the, quote, finest hotels in the whole country, unquote. At the time it was built in 1886, 
the cost of the Driscoll came to $400,000, or in today's cost, $92 million. It was an exciting time, not only for Austin, but all of Texas, as more and more opportunities and businesses swelled in the area, and the Driscoll exemplified the highest standards of that time. However, for Jesse Driscoll, the original owner, his personal success with the hotel would be short-lived. While it is known that he fell on hard times due to drought killing off his primary business of cattle driving, it is lesser known that he may have lost the hotel in a card game. Whatever the case may be, despite losing ownership, his spirit appears to be right at home in the place that continues to hold his name. Where is he seen? From what I've found, just about anywhere. People have reported anything from seeing the silhouette in front of the windows, to seeing and smelling him smoke cigars wherever he found appropriate, to walking in and out of doors. Does he recognize he's dead? Accounts vary. It's possible that he simply takes as much possession of the hotel and death that he did in life. Before he lost to the cards anyway. Just as there are many rooms at the Driscoll, one could argue that there are nearly as many ghosts to fit them. Some of the more famous stories consist of a man who lived at the hotel full-time, through renovations, and even through death. There are talks of a woman so distraught after fiancé broke off their relationship that she ended her life at the barrel of a gun. There's a child known to haunt the stairs after their life was cut short when they fell down the same flight in pursuit of a bouncing ball. And who could forget this painting that gives people the spooks as they walk by? Ghost hunters and unassuming guests alike say they get a sinister feeling and wonder what ghost or ghoul may be lurking along with it. What do you see? Cute child or unsettling spirit? Leave a comment before you go. So what makes Austin, Texas so haunted? I only shared with you snippets of stories within only a few blocks of each other. There are even more stories, not only the ones at the places I've taken you to, but in and around Austin. And if I'm being honest here, there was this kind of thick feeling of somewhat dread and dragging that I couldn't quite shake off wherever I was downtown. My personal anxiety was spiking in ways I hadn't seen in months, and I was having a lot of trouble trying to figure out why. And so I set out to answer my own questions. However, like in many places, it's often not just one answer. While tourist centers claim the light and brighter versions of history, ghost stories remind us of the shadows that create the multi-dimensional reality that we're in. Austin's full history is like many other in the United States, where land was taken and resold by colonial settlers. Over time, even the water of the Colorado River would be harnessed by a dam, until a flood in 1900 would not only break the dam, but also take dozens of lives with it. To this day, racial tensions plague the city, and one starts to understand where such discrimination began when looking at who ran the city following the Civil War. Remember how Governor Samuel Houston was discharged for not wanting to secede from the United States? And did you know that Robert M. Love was a colonel in the Confederate Army? Look, I'm not saying that things are as bad now as they were then. However, before the present day civil rights movement erupted, I could feel an uncertainty, a strangeness, and a kind of darkness that no one seemed to be talking about. Something is going on in Austin under the surface, and maybe the answer to why the city is so haunted has to do with the lesson of history itself. If we don't learn from it, we will continue to loop and repeat it. As I told my tour groups, if you want to confine your ghostly tragedies to the past, You've got to make a change for your future. I'm Rebecca the Ghost Guide. Thanks for watching. And now for that special message I was talking about at the beginning. 
I really hope you enjoyed this travel episode from Austin, Texas. If you like these travel episodes, you're welcome to check out my Tower of London, Boston Common, and other travel episodes on the Rebecca the Ghost Guide playlist. As I noted at the beginning, this was a trip I took before any lockdowns were in place in the United States. I randomly chose Austin because everybody said how weird it was and it was the warmest place I could get to after having traveled to some very cold places that winter. <laughs> to finish out the 2020 year, this channel will be putting out all archive footage before the end of the year, which is a lot. And for 2021, we'll be hitting the road, heading south, chasing more warm weather. Be sure to follow our social media to keep up with the day-to-day -day goings on of the haunted places when we're actually there in the bus. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to this channel so that when all of our episodes come out, you will not miss them, as we'll be posting a lot of content in the next two months, but not always on the same days. Lastly, I wanted to thank these people and organizations behind me. While over 200 people helped in big and small ways to assist us in affording our solar electricity setup, the people behind us gave upwards of $25. And those who gave $50 or more, we put their names on our bus so they could really travel along with us. Expenses for plumbing and updating what's under the hood of our 1994 Chevy bus will be a constant expenditure. And if you want to support us as we continue our trek west, my Venmo and Patreon information is below. Every bit helps. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.